Howdy partners. If you haven't checked out the series of reshells by Genco Megaworks on Etsy for the X-Shot Micro, you really need to. I have a few videos running down the features of them. I have a YouTube short that kind of pops through every single one of them. These are some of Domachevsky's reshells for the X-Shot Micro. And we have here number seven. These micro reshells are becoming bigger and bigger, but this latest one might take the cake. You buy this, you take it apart, you keep the plunger tube, a few screws and a spring, and you turn this into this, a lever action X-Shot Micro with dart storage on the side. It is just the coolest. We can see we have a bunch of gearing in here so that we can have that lever action actually prime the blaster up here. This is that, this is that same pull that's on your X-Shot Micro. It just has a different mechanism for priming it. Joe Machewski, who's behind Genko Megaworks, did a few different options for this one. There is a longer stock option. There is a shorter barrel option. I opted for the short stock, longer barrel, just because I thought that that had kind of a cool look to it. And, you know, because you can pull it out from storage, put it in here, give it a prime, and then twirl it around. And I mean, how cool is that? This is still at its core, a single shot blaster. It is an X shot micro. I've removed the dart post. I kept the AR in. You could remove the AR if you wanted to, but this blaster gets in the eighties with it in. I leave it there because if you take out the air restrictor and then you hand this to kids or casual players, they don't know not to dry fire it. So, I like to keep that bit of safety in for the sake of a few FPS, but that's totally up to you if you build it. And if you buy one from me, I'm gonna have these on Etsy soon. You can request that I take out the air restrictor if you would like. As it is right now, generally by default, I just take out the posts. This is not a high performance monster by any means, but what a fun plinker. I've been walking around my house just <laughs> firing darts everywhere. Of course, this does work with long darts, there's lots of room to put a long dart in this open breech area here, but short darts, you know, work a little better. It's just so impressive to take an X-Shot Micro this far. I thought the bolt action was pretty extreme. This one really takes the cake. I'm also really liking the styling and shape of everything here. Kind of like these colors, if I may say so myself as well. Not a very critical review as far as reviews go. I mean, if you've ever heard of an X-Shot Micro or tried one, you know what you're getting for performance. I think the design of this is top notch. This feels pretty sturdy. I think it would take quite a bit to ever break this. You couldn't increase the spring load a whole lot. I mean, I think you'd get into trouble. That's a lever action problem since way back to the sling fire. If you tried to upgrade the spring in this little micro to get more, that might make it a little bit harder for priming. Although you could experiment with it and see. I'm happy for most of these blasters to just leave them with that stock spring and just have a ton of fun with them as the plinkers they're meant to be. Domachevsky, I'm not sure how much further you can go, but hey, I've thought that before and you proved me wrong. This one is beautiful. All that said, the one thing that I did think when I was playing with this blaster that I wouldn't have minded seeing is this part right here. In previous blasters, there was a hook put in. You can prime the blaster just by pulling on this priming handle. You can just do that. I almost wish he'd had the little hook from earlier blasters on here so that if I wanted to, I could pull this back and prime it a little easier with the hook that he made for versions one and two up here. But, you know, I think he was just trying to keep a minimal aesthetic here and really it is all about priming this way. So I get it. Just options can be nice, especially if you were battling and this lever ever broke. One thing to note, if you build this blaster and the build guide for this is right after I'm done talking, you can watch me build this whole thing in case you print one and you're wondering how to position the different gears and everything so that everything's set up just right. I have that coming up next. One thing I will say is you will need a bunch of lubricant. You'll want to lube those gears. I use this synthetic super lube. I can link to it in the description. You'll definitely want to use something in this more complex blaster with lots of moving parts. You need to have lubricants. I would love to hear down below 
what you think of this one. And if you would want one with a longer stock or you would want one that's almost like a pistol with the short barrel, or if you like it just how I have it, what do you think? I think it's cool that he gave us the options to customize this. Until the next time, I'm out. I'm not out, there's a, literally a build guide after this, but see you later. This new reshell is wild. I thought I would do a build guide. Usually it's a good idea to build one first. I haven't, so I spent a little bit of time just making sure I knew how this would go together. So let's remove some of these parts. This is kind of a good reference point for how these gears should go together. Just in case you're wondering how it all fits, this looks like to me how it should be. Maybe this cog should be one over. I think if we do all of this, this will look just great. So I'm gonna take this those pieces back out for a second. We're going to go right from here. These cogs basically are just slipping over the pieces here. So I'm taking the side of my shell, these pieces here that I just kind of figured out where they go. And you can see as we lever this, how it turns, incredibly cool. Make sure that I got my cogs in the right spot here. I might turn that one one more. So cool. Let's get this in a place. So I put this little bracket. Traditionally in all these reshells, the slope side has faced down. We're gonna fit that in there. And we're gonna put our trigger. It's neat, our trigger has a little space here so it'll slip over the cogs like that. And I think <laughs> that's everything so I can get this plunger tube in place. I feel like every version has made it a little easier to get this in place as well. We need to get our catch spring in there. I didn't show here taking apart the micro. If you're familiar with these blasters, you already know how to do that. If you're not familiar, you can link to my very first one that I do, the first couple where I take them apart and scavenge the parts and show you what to do there. So I'm skipping that on this one. I have everything here. Oh, here's an important step we're gonna do. I should have actually done this first. We're gonna add some lubrication to all of these gears. Like I said, I kind of wish I'd done this first, but that's all right. Let's put this other part. It's interesting that this part is in two pieces. That goes on like that. Making sure my catch spring is still in there. Making sure our spring is behind that wall. Yep, that looks fine. Don't want to lose my catch spring. I don't want it to fly off into the distance. Bit of a gap there. I don't think I want that little bit of a gap, so I'm going to move this piece up one. I may discover that was a bad idea, we'll see. So I'm holding this in, our catch spring is there. If yours is catching, it just might be the alignment here at the back. This all seems pretty good. So just holding that down, we're going to try the lever bit. <laughs> that works. Might need some more lubrication, but that's okay. We'll do that after. I'm gonna put in a body pin here just to get this guy together. I always put them in with these tines facing up. Hopefully I don't discover that I should not have done that right now. <laughs> so many pieces here. These are, oh, these are extenders. And you know what? I, oh no, I'm just supposed to put one. All right, well, one thing at a time. I'm gonna put more pegs in here because this all seems fine. His designs are generally not fun if you have to go back and change something. So make sure you're using the right pegs the first time. There's the body width ones, and then there's the handle width ones. They are different lengths. Perfect, it goes like that. Shorter grip pieces. Sometimes I print the pegs for Domo's stuff a little shorter not shorter, a little bit smaller, <laughs> just because they are such a tight fit, but I didn't do that here. 
There are also options for a longer handled one with a longer stock. I went for the mix of long barrel and short stock, just because I like the look of that. I think it looks cool. You can also do this one in just this smaller length as well, which actually looks really sharp as well. But I'm kind of committed now to the long barrel. So we're gonna do that. I didn't print enough pegs. <laughs> that is very obvious. And my printer is very tied up, so I'm gonna have to wait. We'll put together what we can with the pegs we have. We'll just come back when we get those other two pegs. But as you can see, it's just gonna go together like this. Oh, and let's put in our holders here. I might wait actually and put those on once everything's hammered in. We do have some screws. Looks like there is room for a screw up here. At this point, there's so many pegs. I'm not sure how necessary it is, but screw hole too. I'll be right back with more pegs. Still don't have those pegs, but I realized something I should do right away is get these screws in up here. These screws are quite important. They hold the top of the shell together. All right, now we're just waiting for those prints. I'm gonna put some more oil on these gears. How cool is this? I didn't take out the air restrictor. I knew I forgot something. Ugh. I'll come back, I'll hammer out this one peg and I'll yank out that uh, post so that we can fire short darts. Okay, we're back with enough pegs. I actually had to go back twice because I only printed five and I needed six, I missed that one. I also went in here and I did remove the dart post. I just used some pliers and I pried off most of the post. You could take out the entire AR. I haven't been because I like to keep them friendly for kids to use and I didn't find it was making that much of a difference. So I just left the ARs in. I have this off of the table a bit to pound it in because this comes off past the side and I never want there to be angles or pressure <laughs> when I'm using a mallet. I want to be hammering onto a pretty flat surface. And I have my little groove things facing up. If you're printing, it's not a terrible idea at all to make the pegs a little bit smaller, but they can be hammered out. This is some really amazing work. <laughs> Taking this and making it into this. Like that's just wild. Let's pop on our side dart holders here. Wow. There we go. Another uh, amazing Domo Blaster.